welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showcasing the monday.com Gantt chart functionality. I'm going to begin by walking you through this Gantt chart that I've already prepared and just to show you how it kind of works. And then I will move on to building a Gantt chart from scratch just in case you're not quite sure what you need to do and you just want to go through the process. So with all that said, let's delve into it. And I do just want to quickly mention that if you have any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So what you'll see in front of me is a new project that, that I created purely for this video. And I've just put in a few different elements just to get us the data to get started with the Gantt chart. So if I just walk you through this very, very quickly, what I've essentially done here is I've just created an example project plan. So I've started with different groups. So these are called groups in monday.com and these are our milestones or phases. So I've got project initiation. Oh, I did that by mistake. I've got project planning, project execution and project closure. Now what I've done after I've done that is I've just added three different uh, tasks to each different group. So these are just typical project uh, tasks that you would expect to complete within each phase. So we've got project charter development, stakeholder identification, initial resource allocation, etc, etc. The next thing I've done is I've right clicked here and I'll show you what and I'm walking you through this because it all will, it all has an impact further down the line. I've just color coded each of these. So I've used colors which I think make sense. So I've gone for a blue for the initiation. I double clicked here, then I clicked this button. I did a gray for planning. I've done green for execution. Again, click on that and then click green. And then I've gone project closure and I've just put orange. Of course, you can choose any colors that you like. I've put myself as an owner in here. So I just double clicked here and I've put my, it's essentially my account in here. If you've got multiple team members, then basically put who owns each task or each phase in here. If you're a project manager, chances are it all falls on your lap anyway. In terms of the columns that I've set up, I've got a status column and this is all kind of the pre-default. So we've got done working on it, stuck, not started. And I've just put in some dummy data here. So I've, the way I've done this, it's very, very basic, is I've just basically set up every task in this initiation phase to be one day in duration. So starting on, so in the due date is the 4th of March, 2024, um, 5th of March, 2024, and 7th of March, 2024. And this timeline has automatically uh, pre-populated. So that's what I've done here, okay? And then what it's been able to do is it's been able to calculate that this uh, phase takes three days between the 4th and 7th of March. So very, very simple. Now we'll get on to dependencies in a second because I want to show you that when we show you the Gantt chart. Now, I want to just quickly walk you through what I've done here. I've literally just put some dates into the future and have associated the status to be not started. So essentially 11th, 12th, 13th of March, same for the due date and the same process applies. What I've done in project execution is I've just expanded some of these. So as an example, the status reporting task takes us five days. So this, this will all make sense when I show you the Gantt chart. I'm now going to do that. So what I actually recommend that you do when building Gantt charts in monday.com is build this table out first. I would recommend you build everything in the table and then create all of your views off of the back of it. So all you need to do is you set this, this will be the main table. So if you started a new project, do it all in the main table and then just press add new view. And then you'd simply click Gantt. Now I've already done this just to save ourselves a little bit of time. And I've done a little bit of formatting and this is what we basically get. And I'll just walk you through it. To begin with, we can expand this however we like. We could also duplicate it and we could have each Gantt showing different things. So we could have multiple Gantts on the same screen. Now, let me just walk you through how I've set this up and how it all works. So the first thing I'd do is just click on auto fit because what that's gonna do is it's basically gonna make the Gantt chart in a, in a view that makes sense and that you can see all the information in one place. So that's really, really good. The next thing that you can do is you can toggle it by days, weeks, months, quarters, and years. Now, of course, this project is, the way this is set up is in one month, which is why it's just in Q1. Uh, but that, depending on your project, these different views would make sense. I'm gonna click auto fit and it's gonna take us back to where we currently are. Now on the left hand side, you'll see that we have the different project phases and then we have the tasks that fall underneath. And we've also got the due date in here. Now you'll notice that 
this this Gantt chart is set up, um, it's got the color coding in place. And I want to show you now how you basically basically optimize your Gantt chart. And it all starts with clicking on, you can click on baseline, but you can also right click on here and press settings. So this is how we set it all up. So the way this Gantt chart is, uh, um, configured is via the timeline field. If we were to go back to the main table, you could see that in action. But you could set it up as the due date. Now, obviously, that depends on your needs. And the way I've set this up, it's actually very, very similar. It doesn't really matter which one I use, but I do like to use the timeline, okay? So we've got timeline here. Next, you can choose to group things by different elements of your project. So as an example, you can group it by group, board, you could group it. So it, as, as I say, so if I put board, it just kind of groups everything together. It, it's the whole project. What we actually want to have is we want to have um, group in here because basically I want to sh I want to split out the whole project into its different phases. But you can select it on different elements. So you could, as an example, you could just put an individual here. So if you wanted a, a Gantt chart per person, uh, then you could simply do that. You could select it on owner as an example. You'd have to go back to the main table and just change who is the owner of each task or phase if you like. But I just wanted to show you that that's possible. And this is a really, really good feature. I'm going to go group because as I say, that's what we're looking for in this particular Gantt chart. We can change the labels. So we can have labels by, um, you'll see here, um, you can basically have these, yeah, the labels associated with each one. And you can put, you, again, you can change this. You could put this on as an owner, anything that you want. You could put it on the status. It honestly depends on your needs. For the purpose of the way I've set up this Gantt chart, I actually don't want anything. So I'm going to select none. You can do the same for sub items as well if you have sub items. Now, when you go on view settings, you can do everything such as show dependencies. You can show group summaries. You can show the today indication, so exactly where we are, which is really nice to have in place. You can show the color legend, which is this at the bottom. And also you can set up the critical path from this settings cog. So basically setting up the Gantt chart is really good to do in the main table, but optimizing it further is via this settings tab, okay? So the other thing we can do, and this is what I've kind of implemented ahead of time, is I have colored it by the board colors. So when I was walking you through project initiation being blue, project planning being gray, execution green, um, you could take that off. Um, you could put none as an example, and none of this would kind of come through, but I did this by board and that's why uh, it's in place. And in terms of the groups, you can pretty much just choose your, your grouping here. So that's essentially how we got to uh, this particular um, this particular uh, Gantt chart. I want to now show you dependencies because this is really, really important for basically, um, actually, before I do that, you can also manipulate your project via this Gantt view. So as an example, if I change the, the duration of the task, we can do it directly in here, okay? So each subtask, we could literally just drag and drop. So if I let me just do that. And if I, do, if I was to do that, if I go back into the main table, it will reflect accordingly. So that has essentially changed because I dragged it in the Gantt chart. So both of these screens are in tangent, but that, and that's one of the reasons why I recommend kind of working from the main table. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned as of yet, uh, and that is um, two things. Project closure has not been pulled through. You might have noticed onto the Gantt chart. And that is purely because I've not set any timelines or dates on it. If you look at the bottom here, this is not started and we don't have any dates. We don't, sorry, we don't have any timelines in place. And as you'll notice, I set up this Gantt chart to essentially operate based on the, um, if I were to go into settings again, it's being pulled on the timeline. So that's why it's not coming through. I just thought I'd mention that. Now I quickly want to show you dependencies because that enables us to essentially associate tasks with one another. So as an example, the stakeholder identification task cannot take place until the project charter has been developed. So what we'd essentially do here is bring in a dependency column, click on this right here, and then search for dependency. I've already done that. And then the first one's gonna be blank because this is the first task. So this one, what we're basically saying is, this can't take place until project charter development has taken place. So, and then this one cannot take place until stakeholder identification has taken place. So then if I were to go into the Gantt chart, you'll notice, or you should notice, for some reason, that hasn't pulled. I quickly paused the video there in the interest of time. I didn't want you to sit through and uh, wait for me to find out what I needed to do. Basically, the reason why it wasn't pulling through onto the Gantt chart was 
because I hadn't changed this setting. So all you needed, all I needed to have done is just click on the um, view settings and then click show dependencies. And ha now we can see the dependencies in between the tasks. That's really, really important. Just showing you exactly what tasks are aligned on one another. So that is essentially the Gantt chart. Now I just want to really, really quickly walk you through how I would create one from scratch from a brand new project. Now by this point, you might already be done with this video. You may not need to watch any more, but at the same time, I think this exercise is really, really useful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the home tab and I'm just gonna create a new project. Uh, I'm gonna call this uh, creating a new Gantt chart. And I'm gonna make this as basic as possible just to show you how it works. So we're just going to create this. I just want you to feel a bit more confident with building Gantt charts um, yourself. So here we go. What we're going to do is it's kind of just given us this example project and that's fantastic because that will save us a little bit of time. And just having a, look, having a look at it, it's already created an example Gantt chart, which is actually really, really good because what you could actually do, thinking about it, is you could literally do the same thing. You could create a new project and then you could just adapt it from here. The second way, and I'm actually gonna show you more from a blank slate now, and that would be creating a new board and building it from here. So I'll just call this example two Gantt, again, in the interest of time. Let's just say we're managing projects and let's just leave it like that. So this way is obviously you're in much more control, but your Gantt chart will not be kind of pre-made for you. So obviously we've just got a main table. So what you would essentially need to do in this case is again, you'd need to go through the different elements or groups. You'd need to add all your relevant tasks, perhaps even subtasks. You'd not start, you'd need to assign your, you know, your individual responsibilities, who's responsible, sorry, for each task uh, and things like that. You've got your status, you've got your date, but what you'd need to do is you'd need to bring in uh, fields such as timeline, okay? So let me just put in, let me just put in some dummy data. I'm gonna keep this as simple as possible. I'm gonna just put all the dates again that are pertaining to what's already in this due date column. I'm literally gonna leave it as this. So test one, and we're gonna call this test two. And then what you would do, so this is building a Gantt chart from scratch, plus button, Gantt, and then again, it's gonna create it based off that main table. You'll notice this is much more uh, basic than what we just had from creating a new project. So this is going from the board. What we'd essentially, again, need to do, I'd click auto fit, maybe put it in weeks, and I'd then just literally just go through the settings. So we're working on the timeline. Again, you could work on you can you can work on date. That's also possible. The timeline it tends to be better. Um, I'm going to then put group. So we've got the test here. Um, we haven't got test two because I've not got the dates in there. But yeah, you literally just run through this entire. Um, you just run through this this builder if you like. It's very very simple. Um, that's the group summary. I'm not going to have that in there. We're going to have the today indication. We're going to show weekends. We are going to not show the color legend. Yeah, it's pretty much just going through this, to be honest. You can show the critical path. Um, we're going to, yeah, that's pretty much it. To be honest, most of the work that you build your Gantt chart, at least in my opinion, the best way of doing it, is going into the main table and building it all out from here, making sure you have all the relevant columns. So you've got the essential columns here. You've also got super useful ones and, and kind of more as well. So you could have a progress bar, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Just build it all through here. And then it, it just kind of updates onto this. You just need to make sure that all the settings are optimized. So yeah, I hope this video is useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. And with that said, best of luck with your Gantt charts in monday.com. And I hope you have an excellent day.